certain Mickey Mouse individuals playing with people's indifference to reality. Come on, you know, what kind of leadership is that? You're abusing, abusing, you know, yourself and abusing people's perception of reality. Life can only descend from life and the universal, you know, fountain of life or the absolute has always been, will always be. It has no beginning, has no end. Can we understand that through our tiny little brains? Of course not. Because our brains have a beginning, have an end. Don't confuse to be being with existence. To be and to exist are totally different situations. To be means being with no beginning, no end, which is our real spiritual being. Our, the reality, our real being is spiritual. We are a tiny little piece of the universal spiritual being. And matter and the universal spiritual being created the spirit and matter. The masculine aspect of life, the spirit, fire, and the feminine aspect of life, which is water, the universe, which is also the wardrobe of the spirit. Our human machine is the wardrobe of the spirit. The universe is the wardrobe of the cosmic universal spirit of life. Cannot we see that? Why do we enjoy complicating things when ancient religion have been telling us all this knowledge from centuries and thousands of centuries? And we prefer to ignore that. Why? Because, of course, religious institutions haven't been sharing this knowledge in a clear manner. They have confused people. Also because they've been trying to hold a position of power. And of course, they were involved into politics. They were behind the monarchy. Sometimes they had more power than the kings and queens in the past. And after when we moved, you know, into a more modern world, they were behind many dictatorships. Divorced from science. And this is the problem, you know. Jesus Christ accused those religious institutions and religious individuals who enjoy praying loudly to be seen, considering themselves superior to others, when in reality he called them Pharisees. What's a Pharisee? He described them, you know, whitened sepulchres in the cemeteries, whitened outside, but rotten inside. People pretending to be superior spiritually when they were not, full of arrogance and selfishness. But he also described the Sadducees. What's a Sadducee? A materialistic atheist individual. What's a materialistic atheist individual? Is someone who believes, only believes, that there is no divinity, there is no God. They cannot prove anything. So both have been heavily criticized by Jesus Christ. Pharisees and Sadducees, the two extremes who created each other <laughs> through confrontation without resolving the main issue, which is discovering the inner reality of all realities, which is our real being. The absolute, the absolute. The Absolute created the universe. And after, at the end, at the end of a cosmic day, it means when a planet dies, we are all going to return to the Absolute. So we have mentioned that at the end of a cosmic day, we should the life of a planet. We are all going to return to the Absolute. 
the homeland of the spirit, the homeland of our real being. We descended, you know, from the absolute trillions of years ago as a spiritual beings. We could say we were planted in our specific planet. We could have been planted in any planet. And Mother Nature provided us with the bodies, with the wardrobe of the spirit, with the vehicle of the spirit. The feminine aspect of God, Mother Nature, and the masculine aspect of God, the Holy Spirit, fire itself, or light crystallized because our real being is light, pure light. That light crystallized into fire to procreate the universe or water. And then between the amalgamation of fire and water, here we are. Remember that we are made of water. Our human organism has 80-90% of water. And our electricity, what we call electricity, we don't even know what electricity is. It's the same solar energy coming from the stars and our own private sun. So essentially, you see, here we are. We are alive. We descended from the absolute. Through the what? Through where? Through what is called the black holes. Remember that? Scientists have seen in their telescopes the black holes without understanding what they are all about. The black holes are a way of coming down from the absolute, being planted here, and at the end of a cosmic day, we return to the absolute through the same black holes, which are the door to enter and to get out. But we come back only as spiritual beings. We don't carry matter into the absolute. Matter stays here and transforms into energy. And here we get the moons. What's a moon? A moon is a dead planet. It's a cadaver. Our moon used to be a planet. Our moon, our physical moon, used to be a planet that died trillions of years ago. Humanity used to live in our moon. And when the moon died, all spiritual beings returned to the absolute. And maybe we were later planted back in our planet Earth. This is why native communities speak about that the moon is our grandmother. They say our mother is planet Earth, Mother Earth, and our grandmother is the moon. And they are right 100%. So the moon used to be alive. It's not a piece, it's not a little piece of the planet Earth like many people believe. Nothing to do with it. When our astronauts went to the moon, they brought some rocks, and through analysis of those rocks, they discovered that the moon is much more ancient than the Earth. Okay? So let's clarify also that point and stop fooling around. Now, so the absolute has always been, will always be. It means we you and me and everyone else, we have always been, we will always be. Because death, death is only a transition. It's part of the school of learning. We are here to learn, to do what? To experience what we should call the self-realization of what? The self-realization of the spirit and matter, which is to be able to crystallize the spirit, the light of the spirit to become crystallized and to be able to spiritualize matter. 
when we learn to do that, we unify light and matter. And there is a way to get there. This is a way, when Jesus Christ resurrected, it's because he did that. He accomplished the highest purpose of life, which is to reach what? Resurrection. To resurrect physically. Physically. To defeat physical death. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Can we all do it? Yes, we can. Jesus Christ didn't come to teach us that he was a superman far away from us and we all had to wait for him to come to help us. He came to teach us to become like him. Same way with Moses. He came to teach us exactly the same. Moses, Krishna, Quetzalcoatl in ancient Mexico, Wiracocha in ancient Peru, Hermes Trismegistus in ancient Egypt. They all came to teach the same principles. The only difference is that Jesus Christ portrayed the physical resurrection physically in a complete manner. The other master that came before didn't do it physically because Moses, for example, his physical body was never found. When he walked away from the multitudes and went up all the way to the mountain where he had descended before, he returned to the mountain, to the top of the mountain. And when his followers wanted to look for him, they could never find him. It means that he also resurrected. They can enter into an, an spiritual universe or higher universes, higher dimensions of time and space, and they can live also among us, helping us without being noticed. But the purpose of Moses was not to teach us about resurrection or Buddha or Krishna or whoever, you know, had been sharing with humanity this divine knowledge, which is also pure scientific knowledge. Because science and religion and philosophy and art, they are all divine.